Over the years, our family's had a share of health problems. So prescriptions are a part of our life. Before we went to the big box store. We both thought it would help us save. But with the long lines and impersonal service, filling prescriptions became a chore. That's when a friend recommended DNH. Now Tristan knows our prescriptions. Brenda always helps us find the right vitamins. And after Dad's fall, Monica's been a real expert with all our home medical needs, all without the lines. Trust and service. That's our DNH. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, the second day of July as we head towards the 4th of July on Saturday. Two topics today. Let's start, first of all, with Phil Berger. Good to have you here, Phil. Good to be here, Paul. And Phil, you are Director of Marketing for Family Health Center. That's correct. Uh, why don't you tell our listeners what the Family Health Center is? Well, Family Health Center is Columbia's Community Health Center. And our mission is to provide access to primary medical, dental, and mental health services to all members of the community. But we give an emphasis to the medically underserved, meaning uh, folks that who are uninsured or don't have access to insur health insurance, and also folks who may be underinsured, meaning they have a high deductible. Mm -hmm. So somebody has insurance, but let's say they've got a uh, $7,000, $8,000, $9,000, $10,000 deductible. That can bankrupt you Absolutely. right there. If they come to the Family Health Center, how does that work? Well, Family Health Center receives a federal grant, and we use that federal grant to provide a discount to offset the cost of caring for those, uh, for those individuals. So um, someone would come to our health center at 1001 West Worley, at the corner of West Worley and West Boulevard, and uh, they can uh, uh, submit an application for our sliding fee discount scale, and based on their income and family size, we'll give them a discount. So does that mean that they wouldn't be using that insurance of theirs with a high deductible? Uh, that's correct. Okay, so it would behoove them to come to the, uh, to the Family Health Center. Absolutely. What else is, do you want to uh, get across to the audience? Well, we're very excited about a new service that we're offering called Family Health Center Express Care. And it's a convenient option for minor illnesses and injuries on Saturdays. This is the first time we've been open on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And we're open every Saturday with the exception of July 4th just coming up. Right, right. Uh, and uh, it's a, a walk-in clinic, so there's no appointment necessary. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday. You just walk in. Let's say uh, you have allergies this summer, a cold, a rash, something that needs medical attention, but not necessarily with the acute to the level of an emergency room. Mm -hmm. You just walk in um, at our location at uh, 1001 West uh, Worley and we'll see you. Is that uh, the old Knowles? That's, that's the, correct. Where Knowles used to be that's many years correct. ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 1001 West Worley, the location of the old Knowles supermarket of many years ago. That's right. Uh, the new hours on Saturday from 9 a.m. To 1 p.m. Till 1 p.m. Phil, thank you so much for coming by. If people want more information, what's the phone number they can call? Uh, for our medical services, they can call 573-214-2314. Or for our dental services, they can call 573-777-8997. Okay. Was there anything else that you wanted to mention, or did you get it all in? I think we got it all in. Okay. All right. Phil Berger, thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. Okay, for coming by. Now I turn to... Terry Woods, who is with us from Bradford Farms. And we're going to talk about the monarch butterfly, which uh, is one of the most beautiful. And, and we've got a picture of it here. If, if you want to see what we're talking about, everybody has seen the monarch butterfly. But if you're not sure what it looks like, go to kbia.org, click on uh, Radio Friends, and you can watch this segment. There is the monarch butterfly. How would you describe this? The adult, meaning the coloration? Yeah, or, yeah. So orange and black, you know, very colorful, very large butterfly. Yeah. The monarch butterfly is here. How, how, how long can we see the monarch butterfly in the summertime? We see it generally two times a year as it migrates uh, through on its way to Mexico in the fall. And then as it starts its migration back to Wisconsin and in uh, Michigan, 
Minnesota in the springtime, we'll see it in May and June, and we've just seen it here in the last few weeks. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen uh, several monarch butterflies, but what's amazing is these little insects fly from Mexico up to Wisconsin. They stop off here to rest and lay another lay an egg and get another generation going. So they're ha they will hatch here? The monarchs that we see in the fall that fly by us and go to Mexico, they stay down there until the weather starts to warm. Then they go up to Oklahoma and Texas for the first generation. They lay eggs on milkweed there. Those adults die off. Three weeks later, the adult the new adults start to emerge. They continue the migration all mm. the way up north, stop here. And our row crop, our agricultural areas are frequented by 90% of the monarchs that may travel up to 3,500 miles. Oh my goodness. So they go from the highlands of Mexico all the way to Manitoba, Canada. And one of the important uh, piece of vegetation that we have here is milkweed. Right. Milkweed, and we've got it here. Oh, and it smells so good too. It just smells wonderful. Now this, it's a, it's a little bit uh, droopy right now. You want to look at it, kbia.org, watch the vodcast. Uh, but this is what milkweed, now it looks like. Paint a picture of what it is for people who are not watching. So that's common milkweed. It's very elegant red when it's completely opened up. Unlike the butterfly milkweed that everybody is growing in their gardens, it's smaller, low, grows lower to the ground, has many, many blooms. These will only have one or two blooms right on the terminal. Yeah, and they grow along the roadside mainly. Why is it they grow along the roadside and not uh, in other places? They take advantage of low competition there, and if the the growing point can get up above all the rest of the vegetation, then it will reach that four okay. and five foot tall. And the important height. thing is to try not to cut the milkweed. So you've got to talk to MoDOT about this when sure. they come through and do their mowing. Yes. Uh, this is milkweed. Don't cut the milkweed, right? Mowing on roadsides, chemical spraying on roadsides and genetically modified crops have lowered the amount of milkweeds that migrate. Before it was hundreds of millions, perhaps now it's it's getting lower. So there's an organization called monarchwatch.org that uh, Chip Taylor from KU set up. Mm -hmm. He's the monarch guy. He is tracking these things from here all the way to Michigan. Big time uh, sink for historical information. Where, where can people get more information on this? Can they call you Bradford Farm? Yes, call, okay. uh, call us anytime or again that monarchwatch.org. Okay. He has right. everything but on the website. Bradford Farms has uh, information on this too. All right. Terry, thank you so much for coming by. Pleasure thank chatting you, with you. Tomorrow, Joe Manhart, uh, Eggs for the Fourth of July, our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute, Audio Pat Akers, KBIA, our floor director, Lowell Thomas, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser.